because of today, because of the work that I've done today, I'm going to have. I'm going to choose five literary characters. So I'm going to say Angela Carter, Margaret Atwood, um, Virginia Woolf, Simone de Beauvoir, and Charlotte Bronte, and the, the cook and the butler is going to be Sigmund Freud. I would, oh gosh, I don't know. I, I guess the offices of the Armitage Army. <laughs> I'm sure that you can find them somewhere. The on Tumblr. headquarters. <laughs> well, they'll, we'll make sure they find out about okay. that. I want to take you to a fan question about Dwarfs Illustrated 2012. <laughs> Um, this was actually my idea. Don't let Graham McTavish tell you anything different. This was my idea. Um, it, was, it was Pete's 50th birthday, and we decided that we would create a naked dwarf calendar. <laughs> but of course, you know what a naked dwarf looks like. Um, we're loaded with padding. So that was the joke. And uh, basically, every dwarf was a different month in various compromising positions. <laughs> but there is only one copy which Peter owns, and Graham wanted to make more, and I said, absolutely not. There is only one copy, and there only ever will be. Obviously, Thorin Oak and Shield. Are you, have a strategically placed piece of oak, or? <laughs> What happened in the calendar stays in the calendar. Well, that's all we have time for, for Mr. December. What was it like filming scene 88, I think it was, the walk chase? We heard from Dean, Stephen and Graham that it was really full on. What was it like for you? They're just weak. <laughs> How do your daughters feel about their dad being Bilbo? Um, well, Surprised that you know they've both become girls. That's. Uh, <laughs> no. um, oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. no, Have you got a boy and a girl? Hey, I might do. It's none of your fucking business. <laughs> do you remember there was a scene where um, Porter stashes that pen knife up his bar? Yeah, yeah. And I remember going to the first AD and saying, "Look, I, I need, I need about uh, ten minutes to get it in, and maybe you need to cut cameras to get it out." Because <laughs> he generally thought I was going to do it, but. Um, yeah, that was me teasing. So the weirdest question that you've been asked on this tour? The weirdest question? The weirdest question. Oh, um... <laughs> Sorry, Germany. But there was a guy... There was a guy that came in from Germany who, uh, who said, So how was it filming in New Zealand? Did they have Wi-Fi? <laughs> right, yes, yeah. they have Wi-Fi. Running water? Yeah, they have hot and cold Adorful. running water. Adorful. They wear clothes. It's amazing. It's a very, a very advanced culture. That's very funny. I wanted to ask you about what your Arkenstone is for you personally. Me personally. And I meant for this to be materialistic. Like, what's the thing that you are covet so much that it makes you mad that you don't have it? Oh, it's it's actually not material. It's not material, and it's it's. You want a comedy answer, don't you? But I'm. It's no. Tell it's me. respect. It's the thing that's always that. that always eludes you. You know, you have to fight for it, and you know when you get it, your Arkenstone, the thing that crowns you, is. Respect. One of the things I think is interesting about him is he is an undercover person going undercover with people who go undercover. Yeah, and there's a lot of covers, isn't there, to get under? <laughs> yeah, are you coming in? Yeah, sorry, I've only just said you're into Yeah, come on in. Do you want to share the seat? Here he is now. Yeah. We're, we're on a podcast, do you know this? <laughs> are we, we reenacting scenes from Obsession? Yeah. Oh my god, that might be a bit too much for our audience, a bit PG. <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to be here, am I? I've been hearing about your bruises. Where were yours? Knees. My knees, my my toes. Elbows and hip bones. Yeah, all the bones. How does one get a bruise on a toe? I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, yeah let's not go into because that. We're not going to reenact it. Look at this, the roller skate. When I roller skated over your toe. <laughs> <laughs> there were handprints left on the walls. But they there were was. I think they had to repaint yeah. between yeah. days because there were handprints left on the walls. <gasps> I thought you were coming in to stop me from speaking about something I shouldn't be speaking about. <laughs> this is my interview. Get <laughs> out. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> don't get tornadoes in England. We don't. We get, little, we get leaves spinning in a circle, but that's about it. I might be very, very honest. I can't tonight. I've got to wash my hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite good, wasn't it? No, it wasn't convincing at all. He's even got his 
got like a weird thing on his head. Oh, that's how you can that's, hang, that's hang him on the tree. That's you put the little hanger there. Merry Christmas. One and all. There you go. Excellent. That's yours and we can have a little... Wait. I know. I should. Okay. In the rehearsal room when we first read the play, there, there was a section of the script that I remember connected with me so acutely 20 years ago and I still couldn't say the words. They were still... It'd still choke me to, to say them. Really? And every night during the play, when, those, when that moment would come, it would just, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's the moment when you realize that you're an actor. And we had a huge concert in this room, full house, massive orchestra, and I am absolutely bricking it. My palms are sweating um, because I'm terrified that I'm going to be playing out of tune. Uh, so what I decided to do, um, my dad's here, but he doesn't actually know this story. I decided to move my bow around on the cello uh, in, in time with everybody else without making a sound. Uh, three hours later, at the end of Elgar and Sibelius and Mozart, um, there's a huge standing ovation. We all stand up and bow, and I have not played a single note. And in that moment, I had this dawning realization that maybe I could have a career as an actor. I once overheard my mom talking to her friend in the kitchen, and I was eavesdropping. I shouldn't really have been listening. Uh, and she said, when Rich says he's going to do something, he really does it. And it really changed my perception of myself uh, I think it kind of changed my life. So I'll leave you with this. Listen to those people who believe in you. I believe in you.